Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and this is the first in a three part series on connecting servos to an Arduino, controlling them with JMRI and using them to switch points and control semaphore signals. In this first video, we'll set up all the hardware and get our servos working. In the second video, we'll connect it to a point and start switching it from JMRI. And in the third video, we'll connect it to a semaphore signal and set up some basic automated signaling. The aim of these videos is to get to the point where we can automate everything on our layout. Now, servo motors aren't the only way to control points and signals on your layout. In fact, on Little Wicket, I use uh, accessory decoders with capacitor discharge units, CDUs, that fire solenoid point motors. Uh, but that was before I knew about servos, and if I could go back, I would change it. Why would I do things differently? Well, there are a few reasons, and the first one, and the main one, being cost. An accessory decoder with a CDU built into it can cost between five and 10 pounds. A solenoid point motor can cost between three and five pounds. So for each point, you're looking at around about 10 pounds. And if you've got a lot of points, that very quickly adds up to a lot of money. If you use this method with servos, you can set up 16 servos and it works out at roughly two pound 50 per point. And that's obviously a large saving. The second reason is performance. Servos are just so much more reliable than solenoid point motors. As I said, a solenoid requires a capacitor discharge unit to give it a burst of power to switch the points. However, if you're firing a lot of points uh, very close together, or you're firing the same point multiple times, sometimes that capacitor discharge unit doesn't have time to charge up, and it doesn't give enough energy for that point to switch, which leaves your point in the wrong position and leads to derailments. And if you've got a lot of CDUs, when you first turn on your system and they all try to charge at the same time, that draws a lot of current. And that actually overwhelmed my DCC++ base station. I had to go in and make some changes to stop that from happening. Servos, on the other hand, don't suffer from that problem. They do sometimes draw a lot of current, but only at the point that they're actually moving. The third reason is simplicity. Most solenoid point motors need wires to be soldered onto them, and if anything goes wrong with them, it means unsoldering them and soldering back in again. Servos, on the other hand, come with a plug. You plug it in. If anything goes wrong, you simply unplug it, change it, and plug the new one back in. So hopefully, that's given you a few reasons to at least consider servos. Before we get stuck in, please remember to give me a like and a subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you'll know when parts two and three come out. Right, that's enough talking. Let's get started. As these videos are a bit longer, I've split them into steps and these are listed as chapters in the description below. So you can click on those and jump around to the key bits if you need to. I'll also put links to part two and three in there once they're available. A few quick points on safety before we get going. Please take care when working with electricity so that you don't hurt yourself or damage the sensitive electrical components. Make sure that the voltage on the power supply is five volts for this project. Disconnect the power supply when assembling to avoid any accidental short circuits. And it's always a good idea to use a residual current device when connecting the power supply to the mains. For this project, you're going to need some components and tools. The first thing you're gonna need is an Arduino or a generic brand version. If you've not come across Arduino before, it's an open source electronics platform based on easy to use hardware and software. There's loads you can do and most of my projects are based on using Arduinos. You can pick these up off of Amazon for around about nine pounds. And in this project, we're using the Arduino Uno or a version built by Eligu. You'll need some servos and these are the little 9G micro servos and you can pick these up in multi-packs from Amazon for less than £1.50 per servo. They come pre-wired with a plug, they also come with a few different types of arms that are ready to be attached. You'll need one servo for each set of points or each signal you plan to operate. I'll be using three servos in these example videos. You're going to need a servo driver and for this we're using a PCA9685. You can pick these up from Amazon for around about £5. Each board can drive 16 servos and they can be linked together to drive hundreds. Each board needs its own separate 5 volt power supply for the servos. And that brings us on to our next component, a 5 volt power supply. I like to use the variable voltage power supplies. Again, I've got mine from Amazon for around about £11.50. The reason I like these is because they come with interchangeable heads and one of those heads is a positive negative terminal block, which is perfect for most of these projects. To connect your Arduino to the server driver board, you're going to need four jumper wires with a male pin on one end and a female connection on the other end. You're also going to need a couple of wires to connect your power supply to the driver board. 
You're going to need to download and install the Arduino software, which is free. You'll need a couple of small screwdrivers, one flathead and one crosshead to attach wires. And a wire stripper will come in handy if you need to strip the ends off your power supply wires. I've put Amazon affiliate links in the description below so you can easily find everything you need. Let's start building. In this first step, we're going to connect the relevant pins from the Arduino to the PCA9685 server driver board. I'm not going to explain why each pin is needed, but if you really want to know, there's plenty of information on the internet. Our aim is just to get this up and running as quickly as possible. You'll need your four jumper wires for this with a male pin on one end and a female socket on the other. So our first wire, get these untangled. Our first wire is going to go between the SCL pin on the Arduino to get this to focus the SCL pin on the servo driver. So that is our first one done. The next one is going to go from the SDA output on the Arduino to the SDA connection on here, which is this one. Okay, now we need to connect the we need to connect ground on the Arduino. Either one of those will do. So it's the GND on the Arduino to the ground on here, which is this top one. And finally, we need to take a five volt supply from here on the Arduino and connect this to the VCC on here, which is this one. And this five volt supply doesn't provide power to the servos, it just provides power to the board. And we're ready to move on to the next step. In this step, we're going to connect the power supply to the servo driver. And I'm using one of these variable voltage power supplies from Amazon. And it comes with multiple connection options that connect onto here. And one of those is a positive negative terminal block, which is perfect for what we want. Um, you'll need a couple of wires that are suitable for the current that might be drawn. We're only using three servos, so these two wires should be fine. But if you're using hundreds of servos, then you'll most likely need multiple power supplies and thicker wires. We're going to start by connecting, we're going to use black as our negative on here. and we'll use white as positive. So that is now ready to plug onto the end of our power supply. Make sure this is set to five volts because that's the voltage the servos need. 
and then we can attach this to the servo driver. So again, you'll see on here, we've got positive and negative, or it's marked as V plus and ground. So we need uh, negative ground supply. Go in here. And we take the other end of our positive supply, our V plus plus. really should tin the end of these wires if you're doing it properly but this is just a quick experiment to show you how it all works so we've got uh, ground and we've got our 5 volt supply going in there and this is ready to be plugged into the wall but we'll hang on doing that for a second because we've still got some more setting up to do In this step, we're gonna connect the servos to the servo driver, and again, this is really easy. So we've got our three servos down here, and they come pre-fitted with one of these plugs on the end. And if you see on the servo driver, you've got all these pins going down here, and they are numbered from zero to 15, and you have the corresponding colors on here. And we're going to start by plugging our three servos into 0, 1, and 2. And they just slot on like that. So that's number 1 attached. That's number 2 attached. And that's number three and we're done move on to the next step this step is really simple all we're going to do is connect our Arduino to our computer using the USB cable so take your USB cable plug one end into your computer and simply plug the other into your Arduino and you should see lights appear on the Arduino and also, if it's all connected up, a light appears on the servo driver. So we need to go to arduino.cc in your browser, go to software and downloads. And then if you scroll down, you need to select your operating system from the list. I'm using Windows 10. It gives you the option to donate and fund the project and they are giving you something for free so you maybe consider it. And then you click just download. It's quite a large file so it could take some time. So we're gonna fast forward through this bit. Once it's downloaded, click on the executable, read your terms and conditions and licenses Click through the installation screens and choose a folder and hit install. So again, this could take some time, so we're going to fast forward through this. You'll potentially see a few of these Windows security warnings. This is safe, so you can install this. We've got three additional libraries that we need to download and include within the Arduino software that don't come with it when you download it. For the first one, we need to go to Tools, Manage Libraries, and then in the search box, search for Adafruit PWM. When it appears, click Install.
and you can close that. For the second one, we need to go to github.com forward slash madleach forward slash Arduino CMRI. Click on the README and scroll down to installation. Click on the link and download the zip file. In the Arduino software, go to sketch, include library, add zip library, click on there and find the zip file you've just downloaded and it'll include it. For the third and final library, we need to go to github.com again, forward slash madleach, forward slash auto485. Click on the readme. Again, scroll down to installation, click the link and download the zip file. Then repeat as before, go to sketch, include library, add.zip library. And that's all three libraries you need installed. In the final step for this part, we're going to use an example sketch that comes with one of the libraries just to test that everything's connected up and working properly. Now's the time to plug your power supply in and make sure that your Arduino is still connected to the computer. In the Arduino software, go to File, Examples and scroll down until you get to the Adafruit PWM server driver library and click on the servo example. Once that opens up, we're just going to change a few things. We're going to change servo max from 600 to 450 and US max from 2400 to 1800. Scroll down to the bottom and change the number of servos from seven to two, because we've got zero, one, and two connected to our servo driver. Click the upload button. It'll verify the sketch and upload it to your board. And if everything's connected correctly, you should see your servo start to move. The sketch will loop through each of your servos, just moving the arm from side to side. Hopefully now you've got your hardware set up and your servos are whizzing away. You're now ready to move on to part two, where we'll connect this to JMRI, build a small test layout and connect it to a point. It might be worth taking a look at the sketch we've just uploaded so you can see how it all works because we will be doing a little bit more coding in parts two and three, but don't worry too much because I will try to guide you through it. If you found this video useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you in part two.